And he says, John the Beloved, after the feet, as if they were put in a, in a furnace, his voice as the sound of many waters. Oh, my goodness. You see, what puts the fire off is water. We have saw every, almost every year in Australia bushfires. How do they put those bushfires off? They use water. Water decimates fire, puts it off. So we were in that fire of sin. We got burnt. We were hurt. We were afflicted. We were rejected. We were demented. We had lost self-confidence. We were scarred mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically, spiritually. In every aspect, we were scarred. This needs healing. John the Beloved said, after the Lord Jesus took us out of the fire of hell, he soothed every pain, every burning sensation, every sorrow, every tear, every scar, he soothed it with his voice because his voice was like many waters, the sound of many waters. My goodness, when Jesus comes and speaks to us, his voice is so soothing, like the water that puts that fire off, his voice soothes the pain and makes it disappear. I was so hurt yesterday, but today I'm standing. I was so alone yesterday, but today I am strong again. I was lost yesterday, but today I am found. I was dead yesterday, but today I am alive and living. I was so weak yesterday, but I'm so powerful and strong today. I lost hope yesterday, but I am all full of hope and energy. I want to embrace and engulf the whole world for Christ. Yet yesterday I was given up because his voice was like the many, the sound of many waters when he came with his voice and said, my son, do not fear. I'm with you, my child. It is your Lord Jesus. It is the good shepherd speaking to you. It is your God and creator. It is the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. I have taken you out of your misery. And I brought you into the bosom of my, into the core of my heart, and I have embraced you into my bosom. Do not worry. Do not be weary. For my voice, I have made it known to you. And when you heard the voice of the Good Shepherd, all miseries were no longer to be seen. I am wholesome again. Jesus is good. His voice soothes the heart, the soul, and the spirit. His voice reaches where the unreachable is reached, where the impossible is made possible. His voice and the Song of Solomon, and I'll leave you with this. In the Song of Solomon, chapter 4, the bride is describing her, her heavenly groom, Jesus Christ, and the bride is the church, is the baptized soul in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. On God, amen. The bride is describing her sweetheart, her lover, her, her groom, Jesus Christ, to the angels of heaven. She's saying, the voice of my beloved is coming from afar, from a distance. The voice, as many waters, the voice of my beloved is coming from a distance. 
leaping over the mountains, jumping over the hills. The voice of my beloved is coming from a distance, leaping over the mountains, ju jumping over the hills. Quickly, mountains and hills both require climbing. There is a difference. The mountain, the surface is strong, but the hill, the surface is soft, it is sand. When you climb as a hill, you climb up one step, you go down ten. It is so soft, you just fall and slip and slide back again. You get up again, and you climb and you slide back again. You climb and you slide, you get up and you fall, you get up and you fall. The hills, the bride in the Song of Solomon, she is saying, the hills are the difficulties of my life i.e. the sins, the inequities, the wrongdoings, the foolishnesses, and the shortfalls of my fallen human nature. These are the hills, the difficulties of my life. I sinned, I went and repented, and I sinned again, and I went and repented, and I sinned again. This is the sandy ground of the hill. You climb and you fall, you climb and you fall. But she is saying, do not give up when Jesus is your groom, my beloved soul. Do not give up for his voice not himself, but his voice is coming from a distance, leaping over the mountains, jumping over the hills. The hills are the difficulties, sins. The mountain is the impossible of your life. Hills, difficulties of your life. Mountain, the impossible. You climb the mountain, much easier than a hill, but a time will come when you face a huge bulldoze and the road comes to an end. You cannot go any further. That is the impossible. So what is the impossible of the human race in its entirety? Death. For no one died and rose from the dead but on their own accord by themselves. Only one did it, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. He placed it and he took it again. He died and he rose from the dead by himself. Mountains is the impossible of my life. Death, when I die, I cannot live again. Jesus died and rose from the dead. Hills, difficulties, my sins. She's saying his voice is leaping over the mountains, jumping over the hills. This is an encouragement to all of us. The voice I heard, his voice, was like the sound of many waters, so soothing, so comforting, so delivering, so redemptive, his voice is. The difficulties of my life and your life, which are the sins, and the impossible of my life and your life, which is death, both death and sins are under the foot of Jesus Christ. For his voice was jumping over the mountain death, was leaping over the mountain and jumping over the hills, sins. Everything is under the foot of Christ. Everything, my beloveds, is under his feet. Trust in the Lord. And trust when he whispers in your ear. For his voice saves, delivers, redeems, and soothes every pain and sorrow. <sighs> On Good Friday, the Lord Jesus wiped all the hills of your life, all the sins of your life. And on Sunday resurrection, he wiped the mountain of your life, death. And through his death, burial, and resurrection, he trampled death under his feet and rose triumphantly forever. He who has Christ has eternal life. An eternal life where no sin ever is in existence. Holiness only is there. That is the voice of the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last for all of us, my beloveds. Enjoy your stay at home, thanks to Corona, and enjoy the, um, 
the family that you are in, the family that you have, the family that God has given you, enjoy it with the Lord. I urge you, those who are watching us and hearing us, read the Holy Bible to your family. Bring all your family members while you're at home and you can't go anywhere. Thank God for Corona. Bring the Holy Bible and make him sit around you and read the word of Jesus Christ, which is the sound of many waters, so soothing, so comforting, so delivering, so promising, so strengthening, so comforting. Utilize this time. Be wise and spend this moment with the Creator, the Savior, and the Redeemer of the world, the one and only, the sweetheart of all sweethearts, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. All glory to His holy, precious, adorable, worshipped name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amazing, stunning, breathtaking. I love you, Jesus. I love you, and I adore you, Lord. I worship you, and I praise your holy name. I thank you all my life and for eternities to come. For eternities are never enough, enough time to thank what you have done for me and everyone. It is never enough to thank you, Lord, but I will still thank you, and I will still praise you, for I am indebted forever for you my lord for what you've done no one can pay you back all i can say as a sinner thank you jesus for your love for your sacrifice for your loyalty for your honesty for your presence for your holiness for your beauty for your enlightenment for your voice that is the sound of many waters, so soothing, so comforting. Jesus, we love you, we worship you, we adore you, now and forever and ever and evermore. Amen. Well, we come to the conclusion of these verses from chapter 1, Revelation, verses 9 to 15. And with the Lord's grace, next Friday we will see you again at 7.30 p.m., Sydney local time um, for the continuation um, with, with this commentary that we are doing through the uh, grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, through the love of God the Father and the power of the Holy Spirit and the sacrifice of God the Son, Jesus Christ, revealed in the flesh, the Holy Trinity, one God, amen. We shall continue the commentary on the book of Revelation, which is so, so current and so relevant to the 21st century our time and age. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, protect you, and please send your questions. We have our email address appearing on the screen. Don't stop sending your questions because we want to hear from you, my beloved. Very vital. Share with us what you have, and through the grace of our Lord, we shall answer all the questions that we get uh, at a, a later stage with the Lord's grace. Until then, may the Lord always be with you, guide you, protect you, and deliver you from every evil tribulation, whether it be visible or invisible, in the name of the Almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Lord, our God. Amen. Let us all stand now for the finale prayer, if we don't mind. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace, where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. And the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you, and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. May the voice of Christ, the sound of many waters, be always with you. The soothing, the comforting, the delivering, the redemptive voice guide you, protect you now 
and forever and evermore. Amen. God bless.